This video is going to look at the process costing worksheet. Uh, we are going to work some problems uh, to kind of show you how the um, process costing report uh, needs to look along with looking at some of the segments um, in this report. So the first question on the worksheet says the Mountain Springs Water Company has two departments, purifying and bottling. The bottling department received six, 67,000 liters from purifying department. During the period, the bottling department completed 65,000 liters, including 3,000 liters of work in process at the beginning of the period. The ending work in process was for 5,000 liters. How many liters were started and completed during the period? Um, now this is a critical thinking question um, because uh, it's not something that's just out there. It's stuff that you really have to look at all these different numbers and you have to figure out um, what the question wants. So first step here is what is the question asking? Well, it wants to know what was started and completed during this particular period of time. So if we, there's a couple ways that we can look at it. Um, one way we can look at it is we can look at the number completed. And the number that we had completed was 65,000. Now the other thing we can look at, it was started and completed. Well, these were the ones that were completed. So how many were, were there to begin with? Well, we had 3,000 in beginning work and process. So those weren't started this period. So if I take the 3,000 and I subtract that out, what I have is 6,200 units were started and completed. And so that's just a critical analysis. As I said before, there's different ways of actually working this problem to get to the 62,000 units, but this is just a critical thinking type of a problem where you take all those numbers and you try to figure out what it wants you to know. Now, the next um, question, uh, we have to do a little bit more work than just finding those equivalent units. Um, we are going to have to figure out how many units that we have to um, actually account for and so what I look at here is I need with the weighted average and that's what we're using is weighted average we're not using um, FIFO with the weighted average there are two things that you need you need to know how many units were completed you also and transferred out and how many is in ending inventory and so with this particular case, what we are looking at is we actually had 58,000 units were completed, 3,000 are in ending um, inventory, and that gives me a total of 61,000. Now I have to do this step before I can go to that next step in finding the equivalent units. Now the question that um, we're asked, it says the bottling department of Mountain Springs water had 5,000 liters in beginning work in process inventory, which was 20% complete. During the period, 48 li I mean, sorry, 58,000 liters were completed. The ending work in process inventory was 3,000 liters, 90% complete. What are the equivalent units for conversion cost under the method? Um, I'm gonna look at conversion cost and direct material. Um, because what we're looking at here with direct material, we were told previously that it's, um, or we'll say it was, it's going to be added at the beginning of the process. So if it is added at the beginning of the process, direct material will be at 100% complete. Now for conversion cost, it tells us that our units in ending inventory are 90% complete. Um, some of the things to look at here. For your completed and transferred out. Now I want you to think about this. If it's completed and it's been transferred out, that means it is 100% complete, always. 
So what we know then is that for those units that are completed and transferred out, they're always going to be at 100% complete because they're completed. Now the ending inventory is not going to be 100% complete. Now for direct materials, they're added at the beginning, so everything's been added that's going to be added to this process. For conversion cost, it's 90% complete. So since it's 90% complete, I have to take the 3,000, I have to multiply that by the 90%, and what I'm going to get here is... $2,700. So in looking at uh, this, what I'm going to have as far as my equivalent units are concerned, I'm going to have 61,000 equivalent units for direct material, and for conversion cost, I'm going to have 60,700 units. So this is how you would actually go about finding the equivalent units. And again, I'm just taking you kind of step by step through the process with these first couple of questions, and then we're going to um, get into the entire process. So this next one says, Lemsky Company completed and transferred 90,000 units during the current period. Based on the following information, determine the cost per equivalent unit for direct materials and conversion cost. So in this one, we are trying to figure out what our cost per equivalent unit is. And what we have to do is we need to know what is our total cost. Um, so that is really um, that step one um, for this problem is to figure out what the total cost for direct materials are, what's the total cost for conversion cost. In this case, my direct materials are going to be at $2.5 million dollars and my conversion costs are going to be at $5.2 million. So I do have my total cost now. And then to find the, um, really the cost, per equivalent unit, um, what I have to do is I have to take the total cost and divide it by those equivalent units. So for direct materials, my cost would be the 2.5 million divided by the 100,000, and that gives me $25. For conversion cost, I'm going to take the 5.2 million, divide that by the 120,000 um, units, and this is going to give me 5330. So this is really all you have to do to find that cost per equivalent unit is you need to add up your total cost and then you need to divide it by whatever the equivalent units actually were. Now the other thing that you are going to need that you're going to need to know um, when we um, get to the cost report is you would then have to add these amounts together to get that total cost and that will help you finish out the report as well. Now the last one um, is a little bit longer problem. This is very similar to what you are going to see um, on the test as you'll have to work all of these different steps out um, and come up with the uh, cost report. So the information we have here is that Claudia Carpet manufactures broadloom carpet in seven processes. In the dyeing department, the direct materials dye are added at the beginning of the process. Conversion costs are incurred evenly throughout the process. And we want to use the following information to prepare a cost report for March of 2011. Uh, information that we have, we have units and beginning inventory are 80 rolls. We have transferred in 570 rolls. We complete 500, and in ending work in process, we have 150 that are 75% complete. The other information that we have is that the total cost in beginning work in process is $11,150. 
Um, now this includes these items. Now what that's saying is, is these items add up to the 11,150. So what was transferred in cost is going to be uh, 4,400. Direct materials 1,500 and conversion cost is 5,250. Then we have the current cost and our current cost that have been transferred in for the period are at 21,000, materials are 11,200, and conversion cost is at 52,510. Now, if you haven't already printed out the worksheet, you wanna make sure, pause the video now, make sure you print it out, because you are going to need this worksheet um, to be able to see where my numbers are coming from. Uh, so, what we want to do now is actually work this report. And so I have it divided up into steps. And um, step one is units to account for. So in this one, what I'm looking at is I'm going to take what was my beginning work in process what was transferred in during the period. So I have 80 that was in beginning work and process. I have 570 that was transferred in. And what that leaves me with are my total units to account for are going to be 650 rolls. Now in step two, which is going to go right beside step one, in our report, these are where we actually account for those units. So this is units accounted for. And what I have over here are those units that are completed and transferred out. And then I'm going to have the ending work in process. Now remember, this is weighted average. A FIFO is a little bit more difficult. We're not looking at FIFO. We're only looking at weighted average. Um, so here we have completed 500 units, ending work in process is 150, which means that we have our units accounted for are going to be 650 rolls. Now, the thing about this is, is that units that we need to account for and the units that we actually account for need to equal one another. If they do not equal, then you've done something wrong and you need to go back and make sure that these numbers do equal one another. Step three is going to take the information in step two. So we're actually going to pull out this information right here uh, to work step three and what step three is looking at is we want to um, find the equivalent units here so we're going to take that information of what was completed and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the numbers down really small um, so that you can um, see what those numbers were from step two. And then we have our ending work in process, and it tells us that our ending work in process is 75% um, complete. So I'm going to put 75% here. And that was at 150 units. So I'm going to make it really small and put it down there so you can see what that is uh, from step two. So in this one, we actually are going to have three. Um, columns and the first one is transferred in. Now you're only going to have a transferred in column if you're transferring um, material from one department to another department. So if it's the very first department you will not have a transferred in column. Um, if you are like I said transferring from one department to another um, then you will have a transferred in. For all of your um, ones you would have your direct material and then you would have your conversion cost so those are the columns that you will have again uh, just like we did on the previous uh, problems that we've worked the completed 
been transferred out are always at 100%. So I know that I'm going to have 500 units completed for transferred in, 500 units completed for direct material, and 500 units completed for, com for conversion cost. Now for ending work in process, I have 150 units. Well, all 150 have been transferred in. So I would have 150 units here. Uh, the problem tells us that the die, the direct material, is added at the beginning of the process. So I know that for direct material, it's 100% complete. For conversion cost, it tells us the costs are incurred evenly throughout the process. So this is where we are um, really going to be looking at this percentage. So what we would have to do um, for this one is we would have to take the 150 units, then multiply that by that 75%. And this is where we are going to get um, 112.5. Um, if you choose to round that up to 113, that's fine. Um, you can do that um, as well. Um, but that is going to be part of you know our equivalent units here. And um, then what I'm going to have is I'm going to end up with my totals. And you know what? I'm going to go back through and actually make these a different color so that we can see the difference in just a little bit. way we've kind of got them color coded just slightly. Um, so for transferred in we have a total of 650. For direct materials we have a total of 650. And for my conversion cost I have 612.50. Now I get to step four, five, and six which is the rest of this report. Um, and I will be using all of these numbers kind of going forward. So in step four, this is where I have to find my cost to account for. And I'm going to also have the same columns that I had before and then I'm going to have a transferred in column. I will have a direct material column and I will have a conversion cost column. Um, I'm going to break my cost up between prior period and those current cost. And so for prior period cost, if I go back and look at my worksheet, um, what was transferred in was at 4400 uh, 1500 for direct materials, and conversion cost was at 5250 uh, for my current period cost, transferred in, I had a cost of 21000 And that's what those units actually cost in that prior um, department was 21000 So I'm transferring the cost along with those um, products. So 11200 uh, And then I'm going to have 52510 um, is what I'm going to have. And what I'm going to do here is I will have these total cost to account for. And what I'll do here is I will add these amounts up. Um, and so when I add these, I'm going to have 25400 and these are costs, so I want to make sure I have my dollar signs um, to begin those columns. For direct material, I'm going to have a cost of 12700 And for conversion cost, I have a cost of uh, 
Um, the next step, which is um, step five, um, is to find those um, cost per equivalent unit. And what I'm going to do for finding the cost per equivalent unit, remember before I said that we had to look at what the equivalent unit was and we had to divide by what the equivalent unit was? So what I have to do is I have to come back over and find out what those um, equivalent units are. And so for um, transferred in, my equivalent units, and I can find this information here, the equivalent units is going to be at, uh, 650. So what that's saying is, is I would take and divide that by 650. I would take this one, divide this by 650. And the equivalent yielding units for a conversion cost was at 612.50. So I would take and divide these numbers out. And once I do that, it is going to give me my cost per equivalent unit. Um, there was one other thing that I wanted to do. Um, I need to add up all of these costs. And when I add up those costs, it is going to give me a total of um, $95,860. And I don't have enough room, um, but that would go you know, right here is where that number would go off to the side. I'm just going to add those up to get that total cost because that's going to be important um, because that's the total cost I have to account for. So I have to make sure that I do in the last step account for all those costs. Um, so my cost per equivalent units, um, I have, again, sorry, those costs transferred in, and the cost transferred in is going to be at, $39.08. Uh, then I'm going to have a column for direct material and a column for conversion cost. Um, my direct material is going to be at $19.54. And remember that's taking the $12,700 divided by $650 to get the $19.54. And the last one that I'm looking at, I'm taking the Oops, I'm missing a number, sorry. I'm missing a seven. Right there. I'm going to take uh, 57,760 and divide it by this um, 16, I mean, I'm sorry, um, 612.50. And that is going to give me a total of. $94.30. The other thing that I want to do here is I want to take and add up all of these numbers and come up with a total cost. And so my total cost per unit is going to be $152. And let's see, it's 92 cents. So $152.92. Um, and those are going to be important when we get ready to do the next step, um, which is step six. With step six, um, what we're doing here is that cost accounted for. So in step four, it was what are our costs that we have to account for, and here we're actually going to account for those costs. Um, my columns are going to change for this one um, because I'm going to have what was transferred out. In other words, what was completed versus what I have in ending inventory at this particular time period. So that's what my new columns are going to be. Over this side, I'm also going to have transferred out. And what I have to do um, for what was transferred out is I need to go back and find where I have it on my equivalent units. And 
remember transferred out are those units that are completed and what we can look at here um, in looking at this particular problem you'll notice that everything all of these amounts are five hundred dollars so since they're all five hundred dollars or not five hundred dollars five hundred units I'm sorry since they're all five hundred units I can come over here and I can look at those 500 units. Now the other thing that I'm looking at is since it's for transferred in direct material and conversion cost completely, then I can multiply that by that total cost, which I had at 152.92. And what this is going to give me is it's going to give me a total amount of transfer that was transferred out of uh, 76,000 four hundred sixty dollars um, then I have my ending inventory now ending inventory I need to break up um, and what I'm looking at when I break it up is I'm gonna have a transferred I'm going to have a direct material and I'm going to have a conversion cost for it. Now I'm going to go switch to the next page so that I can make it a little bit bigger um, and we can kind of see what's going on. Um, so for the ending inventory section, again, we still have the columns of transferred out and ending inventory. So for the ending inventory section, I have those units that were transferred in. And the units that were transferred in, if I go back and look, um, you'll notice that they are at the 150. So um, that's what I'm looking at for it, is I'm picking up that 150. So I'm going to have 150 here. And then I need to know how much the cost is. And the cost sorry, the cost was sitting here and it's at this 3908. So I'm going to come back over here, multiply that by the 3908, and I'm going to get a total in my ending inventory for what was transferred in of $5,862. The next one is direct material. So I need to go back and look at what I had in equivalent units for direct material. And you'll notice that we have here 150. So I come back over for direct materials and I have 150 units. And then I need to find the cost. And my cost is at 1954. So I'm going to multiply that by 1954. And that is going to give me a total of 29.31. And the last one is that conversion cost. So if I come back and figure out what my units are for conversion cost, and you notice that they are at 112.50. So I would have the 112.50 here, and then the cost associated with those is at 94.30. So I'd put the 94.30 here, and then multiply that out. And when I multiply that out, I'm going to get um, 10,608. 75. So then what I'd have to do is I'd have to add my columns up. Um, and my transferred out column is here. And you see that the only thing that really is in that column is that 76,460. That should have a dollar sign and a double underline there. Um, then for um, this other side, I would add these three numbers up, and I would get 19,401, 
75. Again, that should be a dollar sign, double underline, because I'm finishing up this report. Um, the other thing on this report that you need to have is you need to total out these numbers. Um, so over here, you would also have you know a total column where you would total out those numbers. So the bottom of it should look like um, cost accounted for, and then you should have your um, transferred out column that had the 76,460. Um, you should have had your ending inventory column, which had the 19,000. 401.75 and then you should have a total column which just adds those two numbers together and what I get is 95,861.75 and what we're looking at here is that this number right here which is my total cost accounted for should equal or be very close to this number right here which was my cost that I had to account for um, and you'll notice that they are very very close this is 95,860 um, this one is 95,861.75 so they're only a dollar 75 off um, and that dollar 75 is just a rounding item because of how we rounded everything um, and so that's really what I'm looking at. Now, we did this whole cost report, and the reason that we really did the cost report is so that we would have the information for next month for ending inventory and how much ending inventory costs are, and um, so that we would have this number right here because this number is going to be our journal entry. Um, and so in this one, This is being transferred out of the dyeing department, and let's just say that the dyeing department is the last department that it goes into. Then what I would be doing is maybe I would be taking it to the finished goods inventory for seventy-six thousand four sixty, and it would be coming out of the um, sorry, out of the dyeing department for seventy-six thousand four sixty. So that's the information that you're going to have as far as the journal entry goes and where you're going to get that information. Um, the other bits of information that you're going to have that are important um, is this information right here in ending inventory uh, because this is going to provide you with the beginning inventory next time and those costs. Um, and so um, the beginning of the next month, you would have beginning work in process valued at 19000 $401.75 and then it would break it down so that you could do your cost report for the next month. Um, so those are um, pretty much what you have as far as the worksheet is concerned. You will have one of these on your test so you want to make sure that you do understand how to complete um, this cost report.